Hi and welcome to the Fate of Humanity. I'm your host Jack and we have a lot of things to talk about today so let's jump right in. So first on today's show we have Give Me the Good Stuff, the part where I talk about some interesting news and interesting things that are happening in the world right now. So to start we have a new enzyme breaking down plastic bottles which is great because instead of using the harsh processes that are very complicated plastic bottles will now be broken down by simple enzymes found in leave composting. So the company that is a French company, Carbios, discovered that they could get this out for large-scale production in just five years. So now recycling plants will be able to quickly and easily be able to break down these bottles in just five hours. Also, they're working on a new technology to break down the more unrecyclable plastic films. So like the films on the outside of the plastic bottles that would normally not be able to be recycled. Next up on the show we have Today I Found Out. Now if you know anything about space you'll know that there's a moon. Earth has a moon. If you know a little bit more you'll know that other planets have moons too. Today I found out that there are over 214 discovered moons in the solar system alone. That's shared between the many that Saturn and Jupiter have as well as Mars, Venus, Uranus, um, and many more. So Hyperion, one of Saturn's moons, kind of looks like a loofah that you might find at Bed and Body Works. It's got a spongy surface, and I was shocked when I first looked at it because unlike most planets or celestial objects that we see with a relatively smooth surface, this one's sponge-like. And it's one of the very few places in the solar system that has a static charge on it, uh, which is interesting. So like whenever you touch a doorknob and you get that electric shock, Ouch. that static shock charge is across the whole moon. Um, it's over, over 200 volts of charge. Next is Io, uh, a fairly common moon. It's one of Jupiter's moons and is the most volcanically active place that we no currently know in the universe. You can see its volcanoes from a telescope on Earth. <gasps> Another really interesting moon I found was Titan. Also very popular, it's one of the largest moons and it's, it's actually just incredibly large on its own. Several times bigger than our own moon. So this moon is one that we could hypothetically walk on without even the need for a pressurized suit. We would still need oxygen, of course, because the atmosphere is more methane than the oxygen that we have but the surface pressure is somewhat comparable to what we have on earth so we could technically walk around without even the name the need for a an oxygen tank also titan has what scientists think are subsurface oceans mountains made up of liquid ice which is water which is what life needs to survive. So there's some studies that think that Titan might even have life on it, which I think is mind-blowing. Um, and we'll never know until we get closer and do more experiments on it. Next up on the show, we have Did That Really Happen? The part where I talked about a recent or old historical event that really did happen. Uh, so this is an interesting one, very recent, a couple years old. An artist's feud. So, two artists, Anish Kapoor, very wealthy, and Stuart Semple. Um, so a lot of you may have heard of Vanta Black. It was popular on social media for being the world's blackest black. It absorbs over 99% of light that enters it. So if you look at it, a lot of times you can't see the edges of objects. It just looks like an endless black void. And it's very expensive, very complicated and obviously very interesting to a lot of artists who are interested in colors and making things look a certain way. So Anish Kapoor bought all rights to this Vanta Black, which outraged a lot of artists because it meant that now they couldn't use it at all. Stuart Semple was one of these artists, and in response, he released the world's pinkest pink. Now, instead of owning all rights and not letting anyone else use it, he is selling it for pretty cheap so that anyone could get their hands on it except for Anish Kapoor which it specifically says on his site 
in many places that he cannot buy it. Somehow, Anish Kapoor got his hands on it anyway. And he kind of put it on social media, rubbing it in Stuart's face. Now, as a person who was already kind of upset at Kapoor for taking the rights for Vanta Black and now getting his hands on his exclusive Pink is Pink, Stuart wanted to do something to kind of solve this. And so he decided to make his own version of the world's blackest black, but instead a much more simple, easily ap applicable, appliable, easy, easy applying paint. Um, he, it's pretty cheap. It's, it can be diluted. It can be painted with a brush. It can be put in a spray bottle. It's very user friendly for any artist who wants to use it. And this is, you know, kind of the opposite view that Kapoor had. And Kapoor kind of got mad, threatening to sue because of this whole scandal, because he had the blackest black. He didn't want else, anyone else to have anything close to it. Um, but he has not even acted on these grounds thus far. And it's just kind of funny to have two artists feuding not over the rights of their work, but a simple color that they can use. And not in a traditional way anyway. All right, so the last segment of today's show is The Future Is Now, the place where I talk about news with space, spacecraft, space industries, things that are gonna take our civilization to the next level. So you may have heard recently that our president released an executive order where mining on the moon and mining asteroids is now available for private use, where before there was an international treaty set in place after the Cold War to prevent anyone from taking um, or using outer space in any way that wasn't for the greater good of humanity. This executive order basically allows any resources mined in space or collected in space to be used for trading, for, for commercialization, for private use, so that if you mine it, you can have it. It doesn't go to benefit all of humanity. And so it's basically taking space from kind of a scientific testing ground something that can be used for more things like trading, resource gathering. Um, and I, I don't think this is quite a bad thing because it allows space to be used for other things that we can't find on Earth. And I don't think it's quite a bad thing if we're mining the resources out, out in space and leaving our planet alone. Next we have another part of this puzzle a progressing space to the next level where NASA and SpaceX now have a contract for over up to seven billion dollars and up to over 15 years and what this huge contract basically is for is NASA's new Lunar Gateway a space station being developed so that NASA can easily have a point in space between Earth and the Moon for cargo resupply. That cargo resupply is now going to be done by SpaceX with their new Dragon XL cargo spacecraft because of how much better it is than anything else on the market, anything else that we currently have. It's the most efficient, you can carry the most cargo for its cost, and SpaceX is known for being very reusable. So SpaceX will be working with NASA in the next coming years when the Lunar Gateway becomes a thing. And what is so interesting about this is that these two things, you know, the executive order and this contract, just kind of show how space is becoming a little bit bigger. You know, it's not just very few scientists doing experiments in space. Now it's starting to become more of a thing that is used for businesses and um, you know, trading, mining, setting up new colonies, setting up new points of exploration. You know, I mean, when people think of mining and resource gathering, there's a lot of greedy kind of viewpoints that you see from that. 
but it's also important because if we ever want to go farther in space we'll need to learn how to use the resources that space has we'll need to learn how to mine on other planets you know be able to see what the asteroid belt has uh, that can help humanity we might find new elements things that we've never found before so I think the fate of humanity is looking pretty good this has been episode two Thanks for watching, and as always, please stay safe, and don't take any chances out in the quarantine. Thank you.